Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing great. So, in continuation of previous Jenkins interview questions, today I came up with again new set of questions. So, let us begin. How to take backup of Jenkins data and configurations? This question is very important because interviewer may ask you how you manage the backup of your Jenkins data and the configurations. So, there is one Jenkins Thin Backup plugin. So, you can install the Thin Backup plugin and you can configure the backup path and create a schedule to take the backup. But it is not a good idea to keep the Jenkins backup in Jenkins itself because it is it is single point of failure. Just imagine you are taking everyday backup on the Jenkins server itself. Unfortunately, someday whole Jenkins server is crashed. Now, what you will do in that case? That is called single point of failure. Means if server is crashing, whole backup is gone. So, another way to take the backup is Jenkins backup using disk snapshot. So, all the configurations are mainly stored in where leave Jenkins folder and Jenkins don't have its own database. So, what you can do? You can attach an external disk to your Jenkins server by creating a symbolic link uh, like where, log gen where leave Jenkins to slash Jenkins data or any other folders. And you can take snapshots or you can copy all the data in where leave Jenkins to that particular folder and from there you can transfer the data to even external drives as well. So, this is one of the best way to take the backups where you are taking whole snapshots of all the data available in Verleaf Jenkins folder. Suppose if you are running Jenkins on Kubernetes, what you can do? You can again take the backup of persistent volume. What is persistent volume? The local mount point or local file system which is attached to your containers or attached to your pod that is called persistent volume. So that volume backup you can take in case of you are running Jenkins over the Kubernetes. So on a high level you understood there is a plugin Jenkins thin backup plugin that can be used to take the backup. Other ways you can take the snapshot of the disks. Now one question comes to our mind that how we can trigger builds automatically on github pull request. Suppose you written a code and you created a PR. PR means pull request. Now you want to trigger the Jenkins job on the basis of pull request created. It can be done. How it can be done? You have to install the github pull request builder. This is a plugin. Github pull request builder is a plugin. Now you can go to manage Jenkins, then configure system and then go to github pull request builder and you have to put your github URL and credentials. For Jenkins to retrieve pull request events through the PR means pull request plugin, you need to add the Jenkins pull request builder payload URL in the github repository settings. So how to do that? Go to github repository settings and under webhooks add the Jenkins pull request builder payload URL. How the format of that will look like? HTTP colon double slash Jenkins server IP or server name colon port number suppose it's 8080 slash GHR P hook slash. So this is one of the sample which you can put into the repository settings and now once that is put into the settings, now in your Jenkins job configuration, just add the GitHub URL of project which you want to trigger the build automatically. And once this setting is completed, once the PR is created, the build will automatically get triggered. Now, sometimes we want to maintain our Jenkins security on a very high level. Because security is really one of the important part when you are maturing in using Jenkins. Slowly you have to take care of the security part very well. So how to do that? You have to, first thing you have to always keep in mind is keep your plugins up to date. So keep Jenkins and its plugin up to date. Even the Jenkins software or the plugins needs to be up to date 
to maintain the security. Another thing is SS control and authentication. So use a strong authentication method such as LDAP to ensure only authorized users can access Jenkins. Ensure complex password policies. So in an organization, when you work or you even have to log in on thousands of servers, you don't have to remember the different passwords. You will be integrating your LDAP and LDAP will help you to authorize using the same credentials to multiple infrastructures and even Jenkins server as well. So if you want to people, if you want only the people who is authorized to log into the Jenkins server, it's well and good. Just integrate the LDAP and ensure that complex password policies is managed. This way you can always make a strong authentication in your Jenkins. Other than that, role-based access control. Suppose you want only the DevOps engineer to modify a pipeline job. Suppose in your organization, there is a database administrator, there is DevOps engineer, there is Linux admins, there is monitoring engineers, too many types of engineers are there. But you want only the DevOps engineer to have the permissions to modify the pipeline jobs. Other different teams, you can give the read-only permissions. So using role-based permissions, you can manage the type of permissions and adding the new users or group new users and groups accordingly. Apart from that, you have the matrix based security plugin to specify who can perform the particular action. So this way you can maintain the security of your Jenkins. Apart from that, you can enable audit trial. So audit trial is enable Jenkins built in audit logging to monitor user activity. You can even Take the data productions for the sensitive data. So use the credential plugin to manage sensitive information, example API tokens or passwords. You have to avoid hard coding sensitive information in job configurations. You can use the environment variables or Jenkins credentials to inject sensitive data into jobs. You can use secure plugins, only install trusted plugins from reputed sources. So these are the different ways which can help you to maintain security in your Jenkins. Now, apart from that, you can maintain the network level security. So place Jenkins behind a firewall or in a private network. You have to use HTTPS to encrypt communication between Jenkins and user or agents. Limit incoming and outgoing network traffic for Jenkins. So you can maintain the network security as well. Apart from that, you should take backup, regular backup of Jenkins configurations and job data. So backup and backup can be used in case of disasters. Something happens to your Jenkins server, you can recover the server using the backup data. Now, sometimes you want to optimize Jenkins pipeline for faster feedbacks. Suppose your Jenkins is working fine, but it's very slow in performance. So what are the different ways to improve the performance of your Jenkins pipeline? First thing is parallel te test execution. So you have to break your test into a smaller independent units and run them in parallel. Second, distributed testing. If your Jenkins environment has access to multiple nodes or agents, then distribute tests across these resources. You have to optimize the build scripts. So review and optimize your build scripts. Example, it's a Maven or Gradle. Ensure that you are not performing unnecessary scripts or building unnecessary components. Apart from that, you can do the load distribution. If possible, distribute tests across different times of the day. Run critical tests during regular working hours and non-critical tests during off-peak hours. So this is the way you can make your Jenkins pipeline works faster. Now coming to the next question, how to use post section in Jenkins pipeline to send notifications to Slack? Suppose your Jenkins job is completed successfully, 
But once job is successful, you want to trigger an email or trigger a message over the Slack channel. How to do that? So a post section in a pipeline block in Jenkins that allow you to define a steps that should be executed after the main build pipeline has been completed. So just make sure you have configured Slack integration with Jenkins and install Jenkins Slack plugin. So how the code will start? Post keyword, then in the always section, this block will always run regardless of the build result. Then you can have Slack send and then message pipeline current build dot full display name. So whole build name has completed and then current build dot result will give it successful or failure. Then you can give the channel name like whatever the channel name here it's general. You can send to any other channels which is existing and then the most important part is token credential id so you have to put the slack tokens here the id of jenkins credential containing your slack webhook url so this you can put as a slack token and this way you can do the post actions whenever the job is done it will trigger a message either build is successful or either build is failed each and everything will be shared over your slack channels now, coming to next questions, what is use of Jenkins home directory? Jenkins underscore home. This home directory is very important. A storage of configuration files. So Jenkins home directory holds Jenkins configuration files such as Jenkins server settings, installed plugins and other system wide information. A storage of data. Jenkins home directory is also used to store data generated by Jenkins during its operations such as build artifacts, logs and build histories. These informations are stored in the Jenkins home directory. Backup and restore. Because the Jenkins home directory contains all of the key data and configuration files, it's critical to backup this directory frequently. A backup of the Jenkins home directory can be used to restore Jenkins to its prior condition in events of system failure. So that's it about today's Jenkins interview questions. In coming days, I'll be coming with more interview questions. Stay tuned. Thank you so much guys for giving your valuable time. Have a great day ahead.